but he's not filled with self-importance. He's filled with the Spirit, but he's not filled with pride. He's filled with the Spirit. He knows he is different from them, but he still goes to the same church with them. He knows he's different, but he still goes to the church with them. He fellowships with them, and he, he instructs them from the world. Lord, we are ready. Engine rev up. We are ready to blaze the trail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are more concerned with getting the job done than preparing for the job. Jesus gives power to the disciples. Jesus is not wrapped up with self-centeredness. Jesus is in is secure in himself that he can afford to share power. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is my pleasure, privilege to be with you again, this um, virtual service, um, fellowshipping from a distance, witnessing through the, 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 um, the media platform, and um, praying that God will touch lives through the ministry that we are involved in and trusting God will do it. We we have come to a time where we are we have to depend on God's work in a way that we have never depended before. You know, we are distant from people, we are we are away from each other and we are still to do the work of God. The church today is like John and Patmos. All right. Like Paul in prison. You are pastoring from behind a prison bar. <laughs> Hello? You're pastoring. Paul is pastoring the church, Ephesus and Galatia, and all of them. Corinth is pastoring. He's ministering behind, from behind prison walls. That's how we are now. John is writing to the church, Ephesus and Smyrna and Tyre, Tyra, Laodicea, Philadelphia. He's writing, pastoring from, from prison. That's how we are now. And when, when it is like this, like no time before are we brought to the place where we have to trust God. Trust God. You know, I, okay. I say, um, when you do evangelism now, Lorraine, Lorraine and um, Pastor Holder, Elder um, Joseph, when you do evangelism now, you can't tell people we're sending transport for you. Hmm. Hello? You can't tell them we're sending transport. So, you know, all those little, all those little glitches that work in. It, 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 you, know, you can't send transport. Um, you know, who win the quiz will get a gift. And how are you giving them a gift through, through virtual? If they win a gift and they, they're in Grenada or in Tobago, who brought who bring the most people on the campaign? You know, <laughs> you got a big Bible. All those things not working now, you know. It's all the little things that, you know, the little catches that you can give people to get them to come. What you doing to get them to come on, up on uh, to watch on YouTube? What? Only the Holy Ghost will do it now. Hello? Only the Holy Spirit. And when, you, when you're not depending on the Holy Spirit now, if you're not prepared to depend on the Holy Spirit, now you come up with all kind of, all kind of jokey stuff. Hello? We need the unction to function. Yeah, we just witness and the rest is up to the Lord to do. Today is my um, last installation of um, this, this series, The Unction to Function. You have um, invited me to be here with you, Southeast. Bring back the old time days, huh? 19, 
1998, 1999, 2000, Pastor Manzano was there with you. People like, um, I'm seeing Kenton Alexander, but that's not her name. Our special music, our special music, you know. We would, we would have been young people then, right, Lorraine? Those days, we young people. When um, Carleen, um, Sister De Roach, and um, what's her name? Um, um, Carleen's the younger sister, Catherine. The one who was married, a little baby then. Time has passed, so 22 years now, 23 years. We, we've grown older, but we are still um, in the work of the Lord. We're saying the same thing that we have been saying for years, over and over. Jesus is coming, get ready. Jesus is coming, get ready. The church is not upstairs anymore. It's, it's downstairs, but the message hasn't changed. All right. The message hasn't changed. And that's what we're talking about this week, getting ready for the for the unction. To, 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 we, we need the, the power to perform. Okay? We need the presence of the Spirit in our lives in order to be transformed, to be transformed, to be changed, to be what God wants us to be. The Holy Spirit begins with transformation, changing our lives, and then the Holy Spirit has to come now and give empowerment to do the work. There is no empowerment without transformation. Yes, sir. Okay? And you don't get empowerment before transformation. You get tra- you have to be transformed and then empowered. So God is waiting on transformation to give empowerment. Because if God gives empowerment, Brother Glasgow, and you're not changed, you're just getting power to continue in your bad ways. Okay? The unction is power and power drive to do what you committed to. Today we're wrapping up. I'm going to read a passage of scripture in your hearing and then we will look at the message of it. I trust that this week you would have been uh, your mind illuminated. The first thing, confronted with God's word and God's will and you are you, your mind is you, you see things and you understand things in a way that challenges you to change. And let me tell you something. Um, nobody is going to the kingdom because they informed. Information is not going to get you there. It is transformation. Okay? So the information that you get is supposed to bring you to the place where you are transformed. Heaven is for changed people, not people who know. Knowing is not enough, people. You know, your, 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 your mind is informed and your heart must be changed. Okay? Must be changed. So, at the end of this week and during this week, we, you know, we're praying for transformation and that God will continue to work in our lives to bring us to the place where we are what God wants us to be so that we can do what, what God, God wants us to do. Okay? Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read Acts chapter 1, a portion of scripture, all the way down to 2, um, two 4. I'm going to skip some verses. I'm going to read from verse 6 for you to get the um, entire pericope. Sometimes we, we preach and we quote and all of that, and we take it for granted that people know and some people don't know. You know? I am sure there are so many individuals who did not know in John chapter 20, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Ghost. And he was giving them Holy Spirit power there. Hmm. Many people probably didn't know that, but it's in your Bible. Hmm. The reason why they had to wait till Pentecost is because they were not opening up and settling down and getting ready for the Holy Spirit. But he breathed on them, said, receive the Holy Spirit on the day of resurrection. Yes, sir. 50 days it took them to get ready. And he spent 40 with them, talking to them. And up to the day he was, he ascended, the Bible said, many doubted. <laughs> so they had to take 10 more days to get their act together. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, I'm reading. Please follow me. This is the last message we hear for this time. When they therefore will come together, they asked him, saying, Master, Lord, will you at this time 
restore again the kingdom of Israel. We're going back. He said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. This is God's business. Yes, but you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, mm -hmm. both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, unto yes. the utmost parts of the earth. Yes. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, while they were looking, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay. So he, Jesus cannot be seen anymore. He cannot be seen, that's right. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, let, let me finish this reading the text, please. When he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Why are you looking up into heaven? He's gone. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come, shall come in the same manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He's coming back. Verse 12 says, Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were coming, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. I'm going down to chapter 2 from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hmm. The message for us today, people, the message for us today, that the Lord has impressed me to present to you the message entitled there is more to it than that okay all right there is more to it than that yes sir father in heaven as we get into the word we pray that you would bless us with understanding and help us lord that we are not just hearers of the word but doers of the word as we submit to you and your spirit transform our hearts Transform, transform our lives and use us as instruments of your will, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I know that this week I would have said some very, very potent things, some, some pointed things, some serious things, some challenging things to us. I know that. Very clear statements from the word of God. We don't live in a time where we can be getting motivational speeches from, from people, you know? We don't, we, 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 this time, we don't need that. We need, we need the straight word of God to bring us into the place where we can get our lives prepared for the next move. We are living in a time where we have to do, Ellen White says, yeah. We have to do more in, in a shorter time than what True. we had before. Yes. Paul says it like this. We need to redeem the time so that we have to we have to we have to pull back time that we lost because we have so much to do. You know, you 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 know, ladies, you are you may know um sometimes you have so many things to do in one day. Right now, Christianity, our Christian life, we have to be. We have to multitask. We have to multitask people to catch up with the amount of time that we lost. We have to multitask as mm. Christians because time is running out. The Bible says 
the devil knows he has a short time. Interesting about time, the devil knows how short the time is more than the people who talk about time. Seventh-day Adventists talk about time, the Sabbath, the 2300 days, you know, the day of the time of judgment, everything, the hour of judgment, everything about Sabbath is about time. We know when the sun set on Friday, Sabbath begins when everybody waits until 12 o'clock. So we know about time. We have, we have, um, we welcome the new year at the sunset of the earliest day when everybody waits until, until midnight. We, Sunday Adventists, ahead of time to every, than everybody else. So we ought to be catching up with time. Today, our message is entitled, There is more to it than that. More to it than what that pastor, I'll tell you. Be before Jesus left, we stay in this context of the Holy Spirit and the preparation for the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus left, he gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olive, Olivet to give them his parting words. He gathered them there on Olivet. He made it clear to them that the mission that they were on was, was, was about not delivering Israel from Roman bondage. Jesus wasn't talking about Israel from Roman bondage. Jesus said, this is not what I'm about. You are going to preach the gospel in all the world. I am here to save people from sin, from yes. the enemy, not the, not the Israelites from Rome. He told them that he was willing, he was willing, eager, and ready, waiting to give them the Holy Spirit's power that they yes, needed sir. to fulfill the mission that he yes, called sir. them to. He said, you shall receive power. The promise, the last promise he gave them, you will receive power. He promised he's coming again. But he said, you have to receive power to finish the work before I come. So that the right. promise of the second coming cannot be fulfilled without the promise of the Holy Ghost coming. Hmm. Yes, Hello? Sir. We yeah. must receive the the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Ghost coming to the church before we can see the promise of Jesus coming. Yes, sir. You shall receive power and you shall be witnesses unto me in Judea, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, utmost parts. And when he said these things, the Bible said, he was taken up out of their sight. And while they were looking steadfastly, the text says they are gazing intently. They yes. set their eyes towards heaven as he went up. The Bible says two men, just imagine, Jesus says, go in Jerusalem and wait for the spirit. And they stood up there, frozen, hmm. looking up into heaven with the eyes fixed. The cloud of angels received him and he was gone. And they, yeah. they were fixed, fixed, looking up into heaven when Jesus said, go in Jerusalem. Hmm. Are you listening to me? Yeah, go yeah. in Jerusalem and wait for the yeah. spirit. And they stood up staring in heaven. Again, the disciples are on a different wave, band and Jesus. Jesus said, go in Jerusalem and wait. And they stood up on the mountain staring. Yeah. And when he told them that they were commissioned to carry the gospel to the world, they were focusing on the kingdom of Israel. When he told them, wait in Jerusalem, they stood up frozen, staring up on the mountain. Every time Jesus tells the disciples something, they're focusing on something else. Uh -huh. okay. All right. They're focusing on something else. He is telling them in the upper room, I am going to be betrayed tonight. I'm going to be crucified. Men talking about who will be greatest and fighting for power. Mercy. <laughs> Every time Jesus tells them something, their mind somewhere else. Yeah. They're never in tune. They're never on the same wavelength. Every time Jesus spoke, it's like when we're on Zoom and somebody, Wi-Fi and working good. You hear how it's static. You're getting static all the time. You understand? When, you, when it's radio 107.1, but you have it on 106.95, so you're hearing static. <laughs> Ruth. They will never tune in to Jesus 100%. Never. Come on, Richard. Come on. And the two angels show up. Jesus said, go in Jerusalem and wait. And Jesus is gone out of their sight. And they're trying to see Jesus. And God sends two angels to tell them, fellas, Ye men of Galilee. Uh, listen, I, 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 I try to be picky with the Bible. You know, picky, picky, picky. Ye men of Galilee. The, the angels reminding them 
they are staying up in heaven, staying up. And he has to tell them, hello, you all are not heaven bound yet. You are staying up in heaven like if Jesus is going and you're looking at, I wish we could go with him. He said, no, you are from Galilee. I'm reminding you, you are earth creatures. Okay. Jesus is heaven bound because he was heaven sent. Hello. So he's going back to where he came from. But you yeah. are earthly creatures. And I'm reminding you are earthly creatures. You men of Galilee. I remind you where you came from. You are earthly. And you are sent on a mission. Earthly. You staring up in heaven won't bring him back. Neither will it get you there. Hello. Yeah. You can stare how much you want. Jesus is not coming back by you staring up into heaven and you can't get the work done staying here. If you're so eager to get him back, if you're so eager, you see him go on you, so wishing that he would come back, then get on your job. Okay. All right. Hello. Sure. Yeah. Okay. If you're so eager to see him come back, do what he says and get a step in. You men of Galilee, don't just stand here looking up in heaven and forget what you are supposed to be doing on earth. And don't get so wrapped up with what you're doing on earth that you forget he's coming again from heaven. Hmm. Amen. The same Jesus which is taken up in heaven shall come in like manner. As you see him go, so get about your business. God, listen, Jesus told them, go in Jerusalem and wait for the spirit. And Jesus is gone and God has to send two army men, two royal guards from heaven, you know, two generals. Get a step in. Yes, sir. <laughs> get down in the barracks and wait. Hmm. Get about your business. Go down from this mountain and go again in Jerusalem. Go and wait for the power. The Bible says, then they returned unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, which was from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Brethren, you see this Bible? You see this Bible? This Bible is true. Listen to what Luke says. Luke says that they had to walk from the mountain in, of, of Olivet Back to Jerusalem, which is a Sabbath day's journey. The rabbinical law says a Sabbath day's journey is 2,000 cubits, three-quarter mile. You could only walk three-quarter of a mile on the Sabbath. Anything longer than that, you're breaking the Sabbath. So listen, listen. They had to walk from the Mount of Olivet down to Jerusalem for three-quarter mile. Hello. All the disciples, I love the Bible, you know. All the disciples had to be walking from the Mount of Olivet to Jerusalem for three quarter miles. The first thing I learned from that, you know, when Jesus rose from the dead, he met them in a room. Yeah. That's all. All right. He walked through the door and met them in a room. Yes. But when Jesus is ready to leave them, <laughs> Dr. Clarence, when he's ready to leave them, he doesn't call them in a room. Hmm. He carries them in the mountain. Yes, sir. Three quarter mile from Jerusalem. He carries them in the open. Hello? He carries hmm. them in the open. He carries them on a mountain. And these guys have to walk three quarter mile in the open to get back to Jerusalem. They have to walk where people will see them. They have to be in the open. Jesus took them out of the comfort zone. These guys hiding in house because they're frightened. These guys hiding in room because they're scared. Jesus said, let me tell you something. If you're going to represent me, the first thing you have to do is get out of that fear complex. Yeah. Jesus carried them on a mountain and tell them, oh, yeah. walk back to Jerusalem. Walk yeah. in the open. Everybody must see you. Everybody you know, you know, and everybody know you, they know you are my disciples. You cannot represent me hiding in a house. I'll carry you out in the open, out in a mountain. Walk back to town. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, sir. Walk back to town. And while they're walking, they have to confront the crowds. 
They have to confront the crowds. And Jesus is letting us know, hello, you want to lock up in a church? You want to lock up in a house? You want to lock up inside to represent me? Jesus said, listen, when you're representing me, I'll take you out in the open because you cannot represent heaven with fear. Yes. The yes. same disciples who ran the night when they took Jesus and every man running because they frightened everybody inside of the house for fear of the Jews. Jesus carried them on a mountain hmm. and told them, he left them there. <laughs> Hello? Yes, sir. He left them on the mountain. And All right. Gone. Rich. And they frozen on the mountain. All of them wishing they could leave. Yeah. But Jesus, the two angels said, go back in town. The entire group of them had to walk for almost a mile back to Jerusalem. He brought them out in the open and put them in a situation where the first thing they had to deal with was facing the fear of going to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Go back to town. And Ellen White says, as the disciples returned from Olivet to Jerusalem, the people looked on them. Yeah. Expecting to see their faces, expression of sorrow, confusion, and defeat. But they saw gladness and triumph. The disciples did not now mourn over disappointed hopes. They were not mourning. They were coming down from the mountain. And Jesus is telling them, you have to deal with this thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. All right. They have to deal with it. They, had, they, were seen, they had seen the Savior and the parting promise echoed in their mind. They were, they're listening to Jesus now. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. And all of them coming down from the mountain and the crowds all around them. Look at them. The master was killed. Huh? They are a waste of time. The cause is no more, but they're smiling because they're looking at the crowds now. You all don't know what we know. Mm, praise the Lord. You all don't know what we know. The Bible says that they stayed together in the room, in the upper room where they had the last supper. Yes, sir. Yes. They went back to the upper room and they met with the disciples. And I believe that while they were there and Ellen White expounds on it, they reflected on the things that Jesus had told them. Yes. They reflected on the fact that they all deserted Jesus. Hmm. On that fateful night, everybody ran. Hmm. And thing. when everybody ran and all of us come back together, nobody can point at nobody and say, you are a coward because you are a coward just like me. Mercy. <laughs> a bunch of failures. A bunch of failures. Everybody shame. Hmm. They would have reflected on the fact that they all deserted Jesus. Even boastful Peter broke under pressure. They must have reflected on Jesus' prayer in John 17. He wanted them to be united in one. Remember what he said? Remember what he said? Luke says, listen people, Luke says this Bible is sweet. The women were in the upper room with them. Yes. Luke said this. Let me read for you the text. I love it. And they all continued. Acts 1.14 In one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman, Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Jesus had brothers who didn't accept him earlier. Jesus had brothers who didn't accept him earlier. Hmm. But now the brothers are there. We're going somewhere people. They are there with the woman and with Jesus' brethren. A bunch of guys who all forsake Jesus in the upper room. Hello? Yes. Jesus' siblings in the upper room. Hmm. All of them missing Jesus. All, all right. right. Mary is there. Mary Magdalene is there. Are you with me? Yes. Sir. yes. All of them, there. 120 of them is there. In that room. No. In Jewish culture, women were not allowed in the section of the temple or the synagogue with the men. All right. All right. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. In the Jewish culture, the women were by themselves, the men by themselves, and then there is a next section for Gentiles. Okay. There were there were levels. The men would go in, and the women yeah. behind, and the Gentiles outside. The women were not allowed in the Last Supper. The women were not there. There were only twelve disciples in the Last Supper. Okay. Come on, people. Yes. Yes. We are going to Pentecost. We are going to Pentecost. But on the day leading up to Pentecost, 10 days before Pentecost, the Bible says all the disciples are there, the women are there, and Jesus' brethren there. In the upper room on that day, listen, brethren, there is no discrimination in that upper room. There is no discrimination between the men, the disciples, the women, and the brethren of Jesus. There is no discrimination. Nowhere does it say the men got together to discuss if the woman could come in. The men got together to discuss when we allow them, what they're supposed to do. You don't read that in there. All the Bible says, all were together. All were in the same room. Nobody discussing who has status. Nobody discussing men should be doing this and women should be doing this. Nobody discussing where James and um, Judah should be. They are the brothers of Jesus. They never walked with him for, for three and a half years. They are Johnny come lately. They just come in. They can't allow them up front. The Bible says they were all there. They all continued in one accord in prayer and in supplication. All of them were united. Amen. 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 That's good. They were not worried about anything other than receiving the Holy Spirit. It was personal introspection. Let me say something here tonight, people. Let me say something here today. You know what's interesting? The Bible, the Bible never said they sat down and had study. They studied to have doctrinal purity before they had unity. No. They had unity, and then the Spirit explained to them the doctrines. Hallelujah. They were not studying to make sure we all have the same understanding of a text. No, they were studying that we all united in one accord. Whatever you believe and whatever I believe, we're not focusing on that. What we're focusing on is loving each other and getting our lives together to receive the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit Spirit come, he will teach us. Amen. Come on, people. Yes, sir. It's the Holy Spirit that came. It's after Pentecost. You have all the epistles after Pentecost. You have John writing after Pentecost. You have Paul writing after Pentecost. You have Peter writing after Pentecost. You have James writing after Pentecost. These guys are writing things to help the church understand doctrine. You could never have pure doctrine and proper understanding without spirit. Okay. Yes. One thing they're focusing on is having their lives submitted to God. Put aside the strife. Put aside the hatred. Whatever you understand about this is, I don't, I'm not focusing on that. I am focusing on let us come together under God and God will teach us. Yes, preacher. That's the, that's the truth. What we're looking for is to have unity based on what we believe. But God said, when I give you unity, you will know what to believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Ellen White writes, as the disciples waited for the fulfillment of the prophets, Prophet, uh, the promise, sorry, they humbled their hearts in true repentance. That's what's going on. Repentance and confess their unbelief as they call to remembrance the words of Christ had spoken to them before his death. That is where they're thinking about he died for me. They understood more fully their meaning. It is repentance and confession that brings us to the place of understanding. Praise the Lord. You cannot have understanding of Christ if you're not repentant. You can have understanding of what Christ taught. If you're arrogant, you cannot have understanding of what Christ taught if you feel what you know is more than everybody else. No. As they determined that so far as possible, 
They would atone for their unbelief by bravely confessing him before the world. We put in the card before the horse. We want to under we want to understand all the doctrines and we believe them we get the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Come on. Yeah. As the disciples waited for the fulfillment of the prophet, of the promise, sorry, they confessed their unbelief. The disciples prayed with intense earnestness for a fitness to meet men and in their daily intercourse to speak words that would lead sinners to Christ. All they concerned with is salvation putting away all differences, all desire for supremacy. They came together in Christian fellowship. Those fellas were in the upper room with the ladies. Nobody studying about position. Nobody studying about office. Nobody studying about anything. Nobody studying about departmental leadership. Oh, yeah. Nobody studying about that. All they yeah. studying is about, hello, Lord, cleanse me, fit yeah. me. Make me Lord. a servant of your hands. That's all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Lord. Yes. That's Lord. all. Yes. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody studying. Well, after we get the Holy Ghost, I go be the leader. Huh. Huh. Nobody studying that. Who want to be the zonal leader? Nobody studying who want to be departmental leader. Nobody studying who want to be president of this. Nobody studying who want to be this. Nobody. That is not in their mind. All they right. want to submit to God. And when everybody submits, God will put people where he wants them. Amen. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Preach. There is more to it than that. These days of preparation are reading Acts of the Apostles 36 to 38 were days of deep heart searching. The disciples felt their spiritual need and cried to the Lord for the holy unction that was to fit them for the work of soul saving. They did not ask for a blessing for themselves merely. They were right. weighed with the burden of salvation of souls. These people in this room and all they're thinking about, people outside dying without Jesus and Jesus chose us to carry the message. We want to be ready to carry the message. That's all they're thinking about. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's all. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a song from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the house. The Lord. When the day of Pentecost were fully come, they were all together in one accord, in one place. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. Brethren, yeah. Brethren, you may have a challenge understanding what the Bible is saying, and you might have to take issue with what Pastor Manzano is going to say. Preach. But as far as the Bible is concerned, the Holy Spirit did not come when they were in a Bible study. Hmm. All right. Hmm. The Holy Spirit did not come on them when they were studying the Bible. Hmm. The Holy Spirit didn't come when they were studying the sanctuary. The Holy Spirit didn't come when they were in a board meeting. Come on now. The Holy Spirit didn't come when they were having a business meeting. The Holy Spirit didn't come when they were having a prayer walk. All right. Oh. The Holy Spirit didn't come in a conference session. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit didn't come in a zonal personal ministries convention. The Holy Spirit didn't come when they were having an ordination service for pastors, for elders, or deacons. It didn't come in an ordination service. The Holy Spirit didn't fall when they were doing welfare work. The Holy Spirit didn't come when they were having an open air service. You know when the Holy Spirit came? When they were all in one accord. Amen. Yes, sir. Never came on them. Talk to me. While they were out on the field. Hmm. Never came. Yeah. And they were discussing a doctrinal issue. Clearing up whether or not Jesus is the high priest in heaven. If there's really a high priest, what is the judgment? If there is a judgment, 
I had the state of the dead and all of that. It, it didn't come in a crusade. My God. Hello? The Holy uh, Spirit didn't fall on them in a crusade. All right. The Holy Spirit came and then they had the crusade. Right. Oh, yes. Big point. Hello? Read yeah. it in your Bible. Hmm. Uh, uh, Luke is writing. They were all in one accord. They were bonded together. And the Bible says they were in one accord means they were united. But it yeah. says in this, uh, and they were in the same place. When you read the text, it's not in only in location, but they were all in the same place. They were all level. Yes. They were all on the same level. Nobody seeing somebody higher. Nobody seeing somebody better. Okay. Ellen White says, Acts of the Apostles, page 38, putting aside all differences and desire yeah. for supremacy. They came together in Christian fellowship. Everybody in that room looking at each other as an equal, the men and the women. The Bible puts it there. Luke says, you know why Luke said the men and the women also? He put the women in there. Because Luke is the writer to the Gentiles. And Luke is writing to show Jesus treats everybody with impartiality. Because he's writing to Theophilus. For Theophilus to understand, Jesus accepts the Gentiles. So if Jesus accepts the Gentiles as equal heir as the Jews, why it is he will have a problem to have a Jewish woman under a Jewish man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Good question. Hello. Yeah. If the Lord could accept a Gentile equal with a Jew, hmm. a Cornelius, read Cornelius in the book of Acts. Jesus wants to let this, this, these people know Peter who's struggling with, with going to the Gentile house. The Gentiles got the Holy Spirit before they were baptized. Go read your Bible. God wants to make a statement to rub it in. He gave the Gentiles the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. Now, he, the Holy Spirit and Peter had to tell the Jews, he said, listen, but they received the Holy Spirit, as, the same Spirit as us. God has given the Holy Spirit, the Gentiles the Holy Spirit that he gave to the Jew. So Gentiles and Jew on the same level with God. If God says Gentiles and Jew on the same level, Luke is bringing it to pass to say, listen, if Gentiles and Jew could be on the same level, then why can't the man and the woman be on the same level? Come on now, come on now. So I he brings you. everybody I hear you. in the room and says they were all together, putting aside differences. What kind of differences? When, Ma when Mary was washing Jesus' feet, huh? Mary Magdalene washing Jesus' feet, the disciples complaining that why she couldn't do this, she's out of place, touching his foot. Jesus had to let them know, hello, if Mary, why Mary can't touch my foot and you touching me? When you were leaning on me in the upper room, leaning on my breast, so why can't Mary? all of them have to come in that room and tell Mary, we apologize. All of them have to come and tell Mary, his mother, we apologize for treating you all women. You were made equal with us in creation. We treated you like nobody's and second class. Now in the upper room, everybody equal before God. Yes, mm. sir. Yes, sir. And when the Holy Ghost come, it wasn't a bigger cloven fire on top of Peter's head and a smaller one on Mary. All of them, same. All of them preached in tongues. Well, all of them put aside the differences. The Bible says the Holy Ghost came upon all of them. The women were filled with the Holy Ghost. The women were filled with the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Day. The brothers of Jesus who were not following him for three and a half years, they had Holy Ghost too. Oh. They had to come together. Yeah, amen. Only then they got the unction to function. Okay. Only then. Only then. All united on the same level. But we need to ask ourselves, people, why is God so interested in getting all the disciples united in one accord for the Holy Spirit? 
question. I'm going to give you a quote. I'm going to give you a quote. I'm going to give you a quote. Yeah, take it off. Give me a second. Look one up. Oh, yeah. Look at yourself, man. Drink some water, too. Drink some water. Praise the Lord. Why is it? Come on. We're going somewhere. Yeah. Church. Church. We're going somewhere. Why is it that Jesus has to tell the 120 disciples, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. Why is it he has to be praying that they all may be one? Why is it that Jesus tells them, stay in Jerusalem? Why is it that all of them have to go to the upper room and put aside the differences before Holy Ghost could come? Why? Why doesn't God pour the Holy Spirit on individuals? Why it is they have to come together as a group, as a body? Why? Why didn't God give each of them the Holy Spirit like he gave Moses, one man? Why didn't God give the Holy Spirit to them or give Peter alone and John alone like he gave Samson, like he gave David? Why does, didn't God give them the Holy Spirit like he gave Elijah huh? or Elisha or John the Baptist? Why? Why it is that they have to come together as one body to receive the Holy Spirit? You know why? Because God wants to make a statement. Okay. Amen. God wants to make a statement. God wants to get a people together. Yes, sir. God wants to make a statement to the universe that God can bring his people into unity and harmony in this world because it is an indictment against God if God cannot get his people people united. You know why? Because the devil can get his people united. Oh, oh. Come on, people. Oh, come on. If God cannot get his people to be united, yes. Jesus prayed that they may be one as we are one. God wants to bring his people on the earth to reflect how the Godhead is in heaven. The people on earth must function like the children of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Stay with me. God has to get his people together. Because you see, it's easy for you and I, one, one, to serve God. It's easy for you and I, one, one, to get power. It's easy for one person to submit and get the Holy Ghost. But it's not easy to get a whole crowd. Mercy. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. It's not okay. easy. Yeah. It is not easy to get a bunch of people to come together as one. And that is what God is working at. God wants to show yeah. if the devil could get his people to unite. Let me tell you something, brother. Listen to what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6. And the Lord said, looking down at the people at the Tower of Babel, behold, the people is one. And they have all yeah. one language. And this they begin to do. And nothing will be restrained from them, which they imagine to do. God is looking back and, and God wants to point us to the Tower of Babel. Hello, the people at the Tower of Babel going against the will of God, but they united and they are united and they are going against God. But once you united, you could get anything done. Yes, that's true. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You could get anything done once you united. God said the people in the Tower of Babel, they were going to build a tower and God had to come down to stop them, confuse them, to stop them. Anything they imagine to do, they can do it as one people. Now, if Satan, who is the author of confusion, hmm, stay with me. Yes. If the author of confusion can get his followers to unite, all right. The Tower of Babel. Hmm. If a president could stand up in front of Mike and tell people they stole the election, a president, a man, hmm. over and over, they stole this election, we're going down to the capital. And he could get thousands of people to go down there and mash down the, the doors and mash up the, the, the place and get in there to, to lynch the vice president and Lynch Lewinsky. Listen to me. If a mortal man could get these people to do what he wants to unite a whole mob, go down to the capital on January 6th and 
storm the capital. They're not afraid of police. They're not afraid of army. They're not afraid of anybody. A man could get them to do that. How can't God get his people? Okay. Right. Okay. All right. see, there is more to it than what we think. God said, I am the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. God is one. One purpose, mm. one objective, yeah. one love, one. And God has a people on the earth that cannot come together as one. Mm. Mm. Different objectives, yeah. different motives. The issue about Pentecost is not God getting us filled to carry the work. That's not it. That's not it. The, the, the main thing is not about God and, uh, you know, getting the, the gospel out. No, it is about getting the people as one. Yes. One. Because when the church come together under, under God's guidance and functioning as one, then you have that statement in Jesus' prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is reflected. And for Lord. the first time, for the first time since humans were created, you have, you have 120 individuals, different people, different backgrounds, different jobs, men, women, all of them from different families and different upbringing, all of that, 120 yeah. people in a room, all of them, when you look at them, you're seeing one purpose. Mm. First Praise time it happened in history. Yes, yes. God was able to get a bunch of people under his, his supervision for the first time to function and receive the Holy Ghost as a people. Hmm. All right. As a people. There's more to it than with witnessing for souls. It is about the church reflecting God. Praise the Lord. About the church reflecting God. Yes, and sir. God is getting ready to do it again. Yes, people. Sir. Hello. Oh, yes. God yes. is getting ready to give the people the unction again. They have yes. to come in one. God, God will have a people who knows what it is to come in one accord. God has a people. The people of God will come together. Division will not last forever. We just have to Amen. tell ourselves, will I be part of it? The All vision right. will not last forever. Jesus will see his people come together and receive the Holy Ghost people. That is a promise. Joel said in the book of Joel chapter 2, and it shall come to pass. It is coming. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's coming that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, God is making the statement again, like the men and the women who are in the room, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And God is not into generational gap. This nonsense that young people, they want to sing that song from the older group and the older people have a problem with it. God will knock out generational gap. Everybody will sing in the same song. Are you listening to me? Everybody. And this nonsense with young people, they don't want to sing this. They only want praise and worship and uh, praise and worship. And, you know, yeah. nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater. That nonsense. Everybody will be singing the same songs of Zion. Preach. There is no generational gap in the church yeah. of God. God doesn't know yeah. about generational gap and he doesn't know about gender bias. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Doesn't Come exist in the kingdom. Shall come to pass. I'll pour out my flesh. And the sons and daughters shall prophesy. God said, I'll have your sons preaching and your daughters preaching. And I'll have your young men dreaming dreams and your young men, your old men dreaming dreams and your young men seeing visions. The old men and the young men will be sitting together talking about what God showed them. Amen. All in one accord. And until we come to that, no Holy Ghost coming. Hmm. No Holy Ghost coming. AY is for everybody. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Yes, is the youth carrying it on, but it's for everybody. Amen. Yeah. And anytime there is this division, you cannot have a spirit of unity coming upon us with a divided family. Amen. Come on, people. Yes. I poured my spirit on all, male and female, old and young. 
Come on, no age, no gender, yes. None. That is human. That is demonic. That is demonic. God told Adam and Eve, when you go to the creation, read it in the Bible. He made them male and female. And he said unto them, them, have dominion. Them, both of them, equals in creation. And when Christ come, he restores what salvation is, what redemption is, putting back things in the perspective that it was before. We have different roles. We have different functions, but we are equal in God's sight. Amen. 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 Somebody has to get this. God will realize his dream. The church must come in one accord. Must come in one accord. And it will come before the end. We just have to ask ourselves, will I be there? Revelation Amen. 18, Joel said it. It's a promise. Revelation says it is fulfilled. Yes. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. This is the church under the latter rain. And the earth was lighted up with his glory. Okay. And he cried with a strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen. God will pour the latter rain on a church that is united, a church that is ready. Jennifer's fire. He will pour it out on you. He will pour it out on you, Lorraine. You, Malina. He'll pour it out on you, Abigail. He'll pour it out on you, Brother Kelly. You, Marlon Holder. You, Grateful. You, everybody. Once you are in line, he will pour the spirit. God doesn't Amen. have a male spirit and a female spirit for different genders. And he doesn't have an old spirit and a young spirit for different age groups. It's one spirit. Praise the Lord. Pentecost is coming again. Brother Bevan, Pentecost is coming oh, again. Yes. And Lord. it is coming for the people who are united and ready. Yes. There's a glorious day coming. And we need to get ourselves in order. It is Praise not just for preaching the gospel. There is more to it than that. God wants to make a statement. He wants to make a statement that he could take a senior man born in one age and a young man born in a different generation. He could take a male who has one kind of temperament and a female with a different temperament. He could take an Indian and he could take a Negro and he could take a Chinese. The most impossible thing you could think about. He could take Douglas and he could take people from the Amazon and bring them all together. People who, oh, yeah. who you like Corey and yeah. somebody like Pelao, somebody like Boss Up Shot and somebody like, like um, um, Kalalu, everybody with different tastes, different upbringing and bring them together. And when God is done, yes, Everybody's thinking the same way. Everybody has the Thank same God. objective. Everybody has the same focus. Oh, yes. Just as the Godhead. And they all may be one. John 17, 21. Father, as you are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus said, you know when the world will believe that the church is, this church is the true church? When you see a when it will see a, see a people as one. Praise the Lord. In 2021, and nobody could believe the seven day adventure of church of God. Come on. Because you got mm -hmm. some people quarreling about taking the vaccine, and some quarreling about the vaccine and this, and some people quarreling about this, and some some people pelting pelting um that at the GC, and some people pelting that at, at this, and yeah, yeah. You one one what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right now, just imagine, just imagine, God's people divided over a vaccine. Hello? <laughs> God's people divided over a vaccine. And everybody knows, the whole church knows, the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Imagine that, hello? The whole church knows, this is not the mark of the beast. And everybody divided. You vex with me because I don't want to take it. I yeah. vex with you because you 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 say and take it. Imagine a vaccine. Truth. So you know in 2021, <laughs> this Holy Spirit ain't coming on us. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit ain't coming on us, people. No function, no function. You know when the Holy Spirit come in, people? When you decide 
You took the vaccine, okay. I, I ain't taking the vaccine. I, I have concerns about the vaccine. No problem, I still love you. Hello? I still Amen. love you. Yes. Yes. I still love you. We're on the same page. Yeah. You hello, you 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 not taking the vaccine? Okay, remember to wear your mask and remember to sanitize, follow the protocol, and be praying that you don't get the COVID vaccine, the COVID. I'll be praying for you yes. that you don't get the virus. Because because you know you could get the COVID and and, and your life could be in danger. You're, you're more likely to be in a, in a you're in a high risk if you don't take the vaccine. But even though you don't take the vaccine, I invest with you. I invest with you. I love you still. I'll be praying that you don't get the 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 um the the, 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 um, the virus. I'll be praying for you. I love you still. That's that's how it's supposed to be. You took the vaccine. Well, we're not sure if the vaccine really what they say it is, you know. Because some people taking it and dying. I pray for you that you take Amen. the vaccine and you don't die. While you pray for me, I pray for you. So you take it, yeah. I'll be praying for you. I not take it, we praying for each other. But we have to remember Amen. we are on the same mission. That is when we will have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are talking to somebody? Oh, yeah. Yes. Because listen to me, listen to what I realize. The COVID could kill you and the vaccine could kill you too. Oh, yes. That is truth. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Oh, hello. COVID killing yeah. people. And the vaccine killing some people. Because they're not the body not, not handling it. They have complications. So why don't the people who take in the vaccine, right? Pray for the people who are not taking it. And the people who take not taking it, pray for them who are taking it because both of us lives at risk. Oh yes. Yes. See, when we love each other and we come in unity, the spirit will teach us how to behave. Teach us how to behave. Am I making sense to somebody? Oh, yes. yes. It's what love. Happened? God is love. God is love. Yes. That's it. It's more than about witnessing people. <laughs> more than about witnessing. The day of Pentecost is more than about witnessing. Witnessing is the result. It's more than about preaching. The preaching came after. Is more than about winning souls. The three thousand were baptized after. after. It is about. It is about. And when the day of Pentecost will come, they were all together in one accord. Accord. In one place. Jesus was telling them. Jesus was telling them. Stay with me. Jesus was telling them. The preaching is for the world. They did not get the Holy Spirit. To benefit them. Speak that. The Holy yeah. Spirit didn't come to benefit them. The Holy Spirit came upon them to preach to people. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. If, listen, on the day of Pentecost, when they were all together in one accord, the Lord could have translated every one of them to heaven right there. Truth. Yes. He could have brought every one of them up to the kingdom, like Jesus ascended. Mm -hmm. They were in one accord. They were united. They were fit for heaven. And because they were fit, they were able to receive the Holy Spirit. Not for them. It was not for them. It was to preach yes, to sir. the world. And you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, for what? To witness to the world. Yes. The unction to function comes after the one accord. Yes. And when we are in one accord, we are reflecting the life of heaven. The life of heaven. Mm. That is what it's about. So brethren, when God says, when God says, be prepared to receive the unction. It is more than preaching and witnessing. That is for the world. The Lord. It is about bringing God's people to the place where they reflect heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. When you reflect heaven, you can re represent heaven. Hmm. There is more to it than that. He says, love one another. By this, 
shall all men know that you have my you are my disciples when you what have love love love. towards them. Oh, the yeah. world will know that you are my people when you learn to live in love with each other. The first calling upon us today is for us to come together in genuine love for one another. Yes, sir. When that comes, God will give us the Holy Spirit to work for souls. Praise the Lord. Genuine love for one another. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bring you to the place as you submit to him where you will understand that this work is not solo. Not solo. God can use us individually in our own space, in our own sphere. But the Holy Spirit outpouring is given to a people. A people in one accord. Amen. Pentecost is an example of how God works. Yes. We shall not receive the Holy Spirit if we are divided, if we are not interested in unity. If I am running about believing that God will pour the Holy Spirit on me because I am in accord with God, but I'm really not looking to come in accord with my brethren, that is a fallacy and a deception. Hmm. God hmm. works with a body. Okay? A body. And your life can be a testimony to God's working, yes. But your desire must be to come in one accord. And that is where God works. There is more to it than witnessing. It has to do with reflecting God in the earth. Let us reflect heaven. Let us reflect heaven as a people. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit, how they, God is a family. The angels of God function like family. God wants his church on earth to be the earthly representative of the family of heaven. And when that is done, power will come. And we will Lord. get the function to function. Come in, let's come into that place, brethren. Let's come into that place. Let's put aside the bickering and the, you know, the bad talking and the pulling down and the strife and all of that. The Bible says preferring one another. Come on. Preferring oh, yeah. one another, bigging up each other, empowering each other, encouraging each other, calling each Man. other, calling each other, and, you know, working with each other. And don't think that I am it. Yes. I am Truth. it. When you do that, God will bring us into that space and give us the power. May the Lord bless you and keep you and help you to understand what is will for us. More than witnessing, it is reflecting God in the earth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm.